Hi, this is Pam, Pam LaGropi Art, and welcome to the latest painting tutorial. We are going to paint Queen Anne's Lace, and it's super easy, really fun, and adds really an airy quality to any of your flower paintings. This is my wildflower painting workshop, and it includes the Queen Anne's Lace, and Black Eyed Susie's, and some little Marguerite Daisies, and some Larkspur and or Delphiniums, whatever you want to call them. But anyways, today's lesson is super fast, super easy, and anybody can do it, and I can't wait to get started. So join me, please, and we'll paint Queen Anne's Lace. Let's get started painting our Queen Anne's Lace. Now I have a three quarter inch brush here. I'm just gonna use um, Aqua. This is Aqua, and this is Wicker White, and this is um, some glazing medium. Uh, for this one, I'm using the Golden Acrylic Glazing Liquid. It's a gloss, and because I want to put in a background-ish glow for my Queen Anne's Lace, and I'm just going to, I've loaded my brush with the gloss medium, and then I'm just getting a touch of the turquoise into my brush. I want it to be very thin and light and I'm just going to glaze in. Now on this background you may not think it's going to show but you'd be surprised how it will. Now I'm just kind of doing the shapes of what I think my Queen Anne's lace will be and they're kind of an umbrella shape. You know it's a, a arc and a flat line. Just Kind of basic, not perfect. And if you want to, make it an oval. You will learn with my painting tutorials, I am not perfect. So now I want that to dry. So I'm gonna get out my blow dryer and I am going to get that dry. So I will come back as soon as I'm done drying and we will proceed. Now the undercoat of um, the aqua Yes, I keep forgetting. The aqua is dry. Now I'm going to come in, and I forgot to add this to my palette, but I'll do so right now. I have some Thicket. And this is Folk Art Multi-Surface Thicket. You could also use the regular. Thicket is one of my favorite dark, dark greens, but you can use any color that you want for your stems. Now I'm going to put these stems in for my Queen Anne's Lace. Now I have several brushes here. Um, these are liner brushes. This one is Royal Majestic. This is a zero liner brush. You see how much thicker it is than this one? This one is a five slash zero. Same um, line, 4585 of the Royal Majestic brushes. Or you can use what comes in the package of the Donna Dewberry brushes, which is a number two. Now this works for a lot of people because they're not heavy handed like me. I get very heavy handed and lose control. So I go with the smallest liner brush that I can ha find. So right now this is a five slash zero Royal Majestic 4585. And I get water in my brush and then I create some inky paint, not too watery. And you don't want water in your liner. Like it could be water on here. It'll run down and drip. So if you have to, wipe it off on a towel, pull it into your inky paint. I twist and pull to a point, twist and pull to a point. So just so you know. Now I'm going to create an upside down umbrella shape with these. So this is going to be right here, say right here. And then I'm going to pull my little umbrella arms, so to speak into that underpainting. Now it does not have to all meet. And you see where I get heavy handed? And that's okay, that's just gonna be part of the design, but I wanted you to know that we all have our weaknesses and mine is being a little heavy handed when it comes to lining and little work like that. So there's the one. And if you want to, you can draw your little stem in, stem, dot, and pull up your little umbrella arms. And 
You see how that works? And some can be shorter because they're like towards the back. And down here, do the same. Now we want these to be airy and light. And we're doing them at this stage because we want some of the white of the flowers to show through and they'll go on top of, but you'll see it through it. You'll see the um, little dark green arms or whatever you want to call them, calyxes, through the white of the Queen Anne's lace. So now we're going to let this part dry and I'm going to load another color on my palette and that is citrus green or you could also do this with a, a greenish yellow but I like this it, I, citrus green for this next step. I'm going to put it out on my palette and then I'll get my blow dryer and blow this dry. Now here comes a really fun part. You can do this portion with a scruffy brush and pounce it on there. Let me reach for one. One of these scruffy brushes. And I'll show you what that looks like. And you could pounce it on there. And that's nice and airy. But I also like, because you want the airiness, I also like doing it with a sponge. So I'm going to wad this up. And then I'm going to touch into my paint and pounce it off. And then I'm going to be very careful and just dab. And you see, and you turn it so it doesn't all the same pattern. And you can do this, leave this onto just one side. I didn't mean to go down that far. I want to go kind of across. I want it heavier on one side than on the other, as if there's a bright glow of sun over there. This one doesn't matter. And you pounce in an undercolor for that's going to show through the white and add a touch of brightness. Like I said before, you could do this with a yellow, and that works really well too. So there's the piece of sponge. This is just those cheap, I don't know what you call them, cellophane sponges from the dollar store. And then I just tear it into pieces. I have more. I'm going to throw this into my water tank because for the next step I'll use a different one. Now I'm going to let that dry because I do not want the white to blend with the green. So we're going to let that dry just like we did the other steps and then I'll come back and show you how I put on the white. So we have the underpainting done, we have the stems, and now the little bright spot that we want. And I have another sponge. That, or I should say piece of a sponge and I'm just going to wad it up again and like I did the last and I'm going to just put it in the white. This is wicker white and I'm pouncing it off a bit and then I'm just going to lightly come in and touch on there. And you see how you create your little airy flowers? This one has a bit much paint in it so I'm going to pounce it off a little more. Mix them up, don't make them all the same size or same shape. Just get them similar. Move your sponge so it gives it different effects. And there you have your basic shape of your Queen Anne's lace. Um, toss them a sponge into the water so it doesn't dry with the stuff in it. And now I'm going to come in, this is a number two flat from the Donna Dewberry one stroke set. And I got it wet, dabbed it off in the water, and then I'm just going to load it with a touch of white, make sure I don't have too much water in my brush, in the ferrule. And then I'm going to very carefully come in and just put some little three petal flowers. You can do more petals, but I find the three petal flowers, little stroke flowers, are sufficient for adding what looks like little flowers instead of just a daub of color. Getting them a little bit big. I need to try not to be so fast. 
I want to keep the petals small. I don't want them to be very big at all. Now you can come in with one of your liners if you're more comfortable and add these little petal shapes. And just, and you can move your piece too. Like I'll move this here and add the little flowers. And your eye will see flower shapes. Try not to line them up. See, I've got these kind of all lined up and that's not what I want. I want more variation. You can put little ones up there, like a little ones floating above. Just touching them in there. Remember, less is more. Step back. See if you need to add a few more or not. Let's see. I think I want one up here. And there you have your Queen Anne's Lace. You let it dry and just enjoy. I'm going to show you what kind of filler flower it, it makes for because it makes it a really pretty airy lightness. This is the, let me move this out of the way, excuse me. This is the Wildflower Garden Workshop that I have on my in my shop and it takes you step by step with all the flowers and how do you put them together. And you see here's the Queen Anne's Lace and you see how it adds just an airy frothiness to the wildflowers, an airiness that is just really delicate and pretty. So I'll leave a link in the description box below on where you can get this workshop and a link on the blog or to the blog for other painting tutorials. So I, I hope you enjoyed this lesson on painting Queen Anne's Lace and join me for the next video.